The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Peter began to say to Jesus, Lord, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We return to ordinary time in the lectionary to a very favorite theme throughout the Bible, and that is, what does it actually mean to be a disciple, to be a follower of God? That has its meaning both in the Old Testament and in the New. Let's take the Old Testament first, because that first reading from Sirach, chapter 35, addresses the question. The author says, the one who really wants to follow God will keep the law, heed the commandments, return kindness, keep from wickedness, forsake unrighteousness, be generous, and be willing to dedicate the tithe with gladness. Those are some pretty steep requirements, and yet in the Old Testament, this is what would bring a person to not only follow God, but be favored by God and used by God as many were in the Old Testament. People like Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Daniel, among many others, used by God in very powerful ways because they truly wanted to follow God and would sacrifice in order to do that. But in the New Testament, there is even a greater emphasis because we have this passage from Mark chapter 10, And it's just following the episode where the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says, what must I do to attain eternal life? And Jesus really just gives the commandments. And the young man says, well, I've kept all those from my youth. Jesus says, but there's one thing you lack. Go sell everything you have, give to the poor, and then come follow me, be my disciple. And that was too much for the young man. He was attached to his material possessions. He could keep the other commandments, but he forgot the first one, not to have any false gods. And certainly money was his God. Well, after that little session, Peter asked the question, Jesus, look, we've left everything and followed you. What about us? Jesus gives that remarkable answer. There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father, children, fields for my sake and the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now and eternal life, but with persecution. For this rich young man, he was not willing to make that sacrifice, and yet what did he lose? A hundredfold and eternal life. So it really begs the question for each one of us because there are would-be disciples who want to follow but then have some conditions. We see that again throughout the New Testament especially. So what is it that we are asked to do to really follow God? That's the question. Because the consequences are very great. Not only will God use us, as he did the Old Testament saints, to bring the good news to others, but the rewards are eternal. And yes, persecutions are mentioned, but even the persecutions are opportunities for us in our suffering to grow closer to God and not rely so much on ourselves, but to really surrender to God and say, in the face of all the suffering I'm going through, I still follow you, but I need your help. And that's when we truly become a disciple. We don't rely on, well, I kept the commandments, I've done this, I've done that. Simply God I want to follow you, but I need your help. And that is a true disciple.